Calaroga Shark Media. Hi, Lee Ho. I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. You know whose publicist deserves a raise today? Mine. I'm the guest on the Letterman podcast. Apparently, Mike, the host, everybody must have said no to him. Everyone else must be dead or on vacation. It is the summer. He had no one to turn to, and he had asked me to be the guest. And we didn't even talk about David Letterman. Have you heard of David Letterman? Hosted a late night show for 30 years, uh, does a thing on Netflix. He's not that famous. Anyway, if you're a fan of me and you want to hear me talk about me for 80, 90 minutes with Mike, the Letterman podcast. I will attempt to remember to put a link in the show notes so you can one click it. There's also a YouTube version. So if you listen to this podcast every day and you're like, you know, Johnny Mac's got a sexy voice. He must be a handsome looking dude, even though he admits to being 54 and could lose a couple pounds. Well, if you watch the video, there's two of us. The guy that looks like George Clooney, that's me. The Letterman Podcast, wherever you get your shows. I had a lot of fun talking to Mike. One of the topics we talked about is how I build this show and how I will put in the first position a story that has famous names so that people click on the podcast. For example, say you had a story where Jerry Seinfeld could have been on South Park. That would be good for a headline. You would use that as your headline and make it story number one. Well, as the story goes, supposedly Jerry Seinfeld reached out to the creators of South Park back in 1997 was like, hey, can I be on the show? And the South Park guy said, sure. And they asked Jerry to voice Turkey number two. Lines would have included things like gobble, gobble. Jerry declined. The role of Turkey number two was played by one of the usual South Park voice actors. My favorite headline of the day from Entertainment Weekly. The Facts of Life revival was spoiled by a greedy bitch. According to co-star Mindy Cohn. All right, let's break this down because it gets really interesting really fast. Mindy Cohn says she and two of her castmates were betrayed when the fourth member of their friendly quartet spoiled plans for a revival of Facts of Life. Now, first of all, what would a revival of Facts of Life even be in the 2020s? Four 60-year-old women living together? Do we want to see this? I don't think we actually want to see that. If you told me you were bringing it back and Mindy Cohn is now in the Mrs. Garrett role and they're like some new uh, college-age girls, all right, that makes sense. But four 60-year-old women living together... Did they never get married? Do they just have sad lives? Are they four widows? Isn't this just the Golden Girls? What are we doing? Don't make this. Mindy Cohn said And during the pandemic, there was a roundtable with Octavia Spencer and Amy Poehler and Jennifer Aniston. They all said, yeah, our parents grew up with all in the family, but we grew up with Facts of Life. That's the Norman Lear sitcom that we love. Well, Norman Lear heard that and he reached out to the main cast of Natalie Cohn. Lisa Welcher played Blair, Kim Fields as Tootie and Nancy McKeon, who Johnny Mac has a soft spot for. She played Joe. Leah reached out to them. They hired a writer. They started meeting about the revival over Zoom. But what happened next, Cohn says, was not cute. One of the girls went behind our backs and tried to make a separate deal for a spinoff just for herself and devastated the rest of us. Okay, let's speculate. Who do you think it is? Do you think it was Blair? Do you think it was Tootie? Do you think it was Joe? Hmm. I don't know what any of them have been doing since. Which one of them do you think double dealt the other three? On the podcast where Mindy Cohn told the story, actor Michael Hitchcock was one of the guests. Hitchcock said, there's always a greedy bitch. Mindy Cohn replied, you know what, Michael Hitchcock? Greedy bitch. She was a greedy bitch. I'll say it. She did not name names, but she did suggest that a scroll through her Instagram account would give a clue about which former castmate she spends time with and with whom she does not. I'm tempted to whip out my phone right now, but... I got to record the weekend, so I'm not going to do it. You guys do it and tell me in the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News Podcast group, who Mindy Cohn interacts with on Instagram and who she doesn't. Mindy said, a couple of people can't move past it, don't want to move past it. We're not as united. We were united for 40 years over not talking about each other, not doing dirty, you know, all for one, one for all, all this kind of wreck that, which is sad, really sad. (laughs) Now I kind of want to see the four 60-year-old women living together with their sad lives that didn't work out. Ugh, don't make the facts alive. What are you doing? Vince Vaughn is set to become a majority stakeholder of the pickleball team, the Coachella Valley Scorpions. No, it's not a slow news day. I'm just amused by the stories today. The Coachella Valley Scorpions were launched in May. They're one of 12 teams competing in the National Pickleball League's Champions Pro League which welcomes players 50 years old and above. So Vince Vaughn owns a senior league team, pickleball team. Vince Vaughn said, I've always enjoyed the game, and and in meeting co-owner Kim Jagd, I was impressed with her, not only as a player, but her passion. 
and style of coaching. I'm excited to support her and the Scorpions on their journey. Kim Jagged said, when you're on the court with Vince, you can feel his energy and excitement for pickleball. His involvement is an exciting development for the team and will help the Scorpions continue to build their brand both in Coachella Valley and in the broader Southern California arena. Hey guys, have you seen Welcome to Wrexham? Vince Vaughn, pickleball, do it, film it. You know what? Give a piece of this team to Ryan Reynolds. That dude likes to hustle to the point where Kevin Hart is like, yo, will you take a day off? Allison Reese getting some buzz for her Kamala Harris impression. Now, if you listen to the show every day, you know, sometimes I'm a little tough on TikTok comedians. Let's see Allison Reese as Kamala Harris picking her VP. Let's listen. Who should be my VP? Oh, <laughs> bars. Okay. Barack. And he's never been vice. John Stewart. White people like him. Monopoly guy. People like money. They also like cartoons. I'd love to get Michelle. But she's probably busy writing a book or whatever. Not Cory Booker, his cousin. RuPaul. As I said earlier in the week, the impression's pretty good. Not sure the material's there, and I'm not sure that's going to get old really quickly. But I've been wrong about such things, and I'm not from the TikTok generation. I don't understand it. I'm up here on Old Man Mountain, where I get excited about things like Dave Chappelle. Playing a concert tonight, he will feature rapper 50 Cent, known for the worst first pitch in Major League Baseball history. The show's at 9 p.m. Tickets went on sale yesterday at noon. I told you about it as soon as I heard about it. I guarantee it's sold out. And he wouldn't let you bring your phone in anyway, so who cares? Sam Marillo talked to Cracked. No, there's nobody named Sam Marillo. It's Sam Marillo. But <laughs> my document has corrected it to say Sam Marillo, and I just read it. No, Sam Marillo. I don't know what Sam Marillo is doing. Let's Google who's Sam Marillo. You can tell I'm loose today because I just did 90 minutes with Mike on the Letterman podcast. Let's see. Uh, there's a guy named Sam Marillo who has an Instagram account. There's a guy who's a news producer at NBC. But I'm going to click on SamMarillo.com, which says Sam Marillo hair. And a click on SamMarillo.com tells us the hair you always wanted with the confidence you always deserved. Let's click on About Sam. Sam says, while most stylists offer a great first service, I see my role as a stylist a little differently. When I'm not in the salon suite... I'm more than likely with my husband and son enjoying some quality time. All right. I have quite digressed. Let's not talk about Sam Marillo. Let's talk about comedian Sam Morell, who talked to Crack and shared that I interned on the Colbert Report back in the day. He was crushing at that point. It was cool to see somebody in that zone. It was a very different type of comedy. He was doing a character. It was also a well-oiled machine of a TV show. Sam explained the flow of a comedy act and said, there's a reason you can't tell certain jokes in certain places. I can't open on an abortion joke. I can't open on a really dark premise. You have to earn it, just like in a friendship or life. That's why it's easier now for me to do stand-up, because the audience that comes out usually trusts me. But then you're pushing it even further. Even now, I still need to put a dark joke later in my set, no matter what. I call them hard-to-follow jokes. A lot of comics get off on being like, I said it, but anyone can say it. You have to say it cleverly. That's literally the job, to make it funny. There's an obsession now with being shocking for the sake of being shocking. And sometimes people will show me someone and they'll think I'll find it funny because it's edgy in their mind. But, you know, I like clean comedy. I like good comedy, dark or light. I don't give a hoot. People get a little too caught up in what is taboo rather than what's funny. Continuing with today's theme of doing stories that are amusing to me. From the Johnson County Post, your home for comedy news, the headline, KC Comedian Starts New Endeavor with Johnson County Food Truck. That's right, Jake Triplett's publicist would win publicist of the day, but I'm winning publicist of the day for my 80, 90 minutes on the Letterman podcast, available wherever you get your shows. But Jake Triplett plans to open his Bondi Bowls food truck later this year. This is why this publicist deserves a raise. The food truck's not even out yet. It's coming out later this year. We're told between touring as a stand-up comedian, podcasting, and creating YouTube content, Jake Triplett is used to giving people a laugh with his newest business endeavor. He's hoping to make people smile, albeit in a different way, by handing them a fruity treat. Now, if you don't think this publicist deserves a raise, the details of the story tell us, while an exact address for the food truck has not been pinned down yet, Triplet hopes to open the Bondi Bowls by late summer or early fall. Once it opens, it'll likely operate from 8 to 8 daily. In case you're curious, customers can create their own bowls or smoothies. Uh, you can add a vast range of toppings. Those toppings include blueberries, chia seeds, and homemade vegan granola. The bowls are vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. 
You can also get other items like frozen lemonade, shaved ice, and granola power balls. It's not a slow news day. I have actually bounced stories already from today. I'm just amusing myself. Triplet is a self-described smoothie bowl enthusiast. <laughs> he says, it's a growing industry. I like them so much. I just thought, what if I made my own? By the way, if you're in Johnson County, they point out. New healthy eatery Bonsai Bowl has opened up in Overland Park. A new exhibit at the Catskills Borscht Belt Museum in Ellenville, New York. This weekend, it's Borscht Belt Fest. Tonight through Sunday, with heaping portions of nostalgia and comedy, music and panel talks at several locations throughout Ellenville, which is not too far from New York City, nor my house. I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm back and forth. I kind of want to go see Van Hagar. You know what I mean? If you're paying attention, if not, it doesn't matter on Saturday night. I also kind of want to go to the beach. I don't know what I want to do this weekend. So I'm probably not going to make the Borscht Belt Fest which is an annual event, maybe I'll go next year, produced by the museum, which bills itself as dedicated to preserving the legacy of the Borscht Belt Resort area. In addition to street fair vendors, hey, maybe there'll be a guy with a smoothie truck, who knows, food trucks and artisans, there'll be all sorts of events and discussions, including a game of Simon Says and a screening of Dirty Dancing. I don't know why I find this story so funny today. Today's silly. So yeah, you know, if you got nothing to do, maybe this weekend drive up to Ellenville and play Simon Says. Tonight at 7, it's Cocktails and Comedy Kickoff. Tomorrow at 11.30 a.m., uh, Borscht Belt Talks, My Daddy the Comedian with the children of some Borscht Belt comedians. 12.30, Simon Says, down at Liberty Square. 8.30 p.m., Dirty Dancing. Sunday, 9.30 a.m., you can't get into Meet the Archivist Sunday Brunch and Field Trip. It's sold out. Borscht Belt archivist Alan Frischman conducts a tour of his home, but it's sold out. No brunch for you. One o'clock, my buddy, Cousin Brucey. I worked with Bruce uh, several times in my career. Very good guy. Well, at one o'clock, Borscht Belt talks. This is Sunday. Cousin Brucey's Dirty Dancing Affair. The radio icon talks about his role in Dirty Dancing. 5 p.m., the Jackie Mason musical Cabaret. Oh, yes, all this. 90 Canal Street, Ellenville, New York. It's close to a lot of big cities. You should go. Details at BorschtBelt.org. And that is your silly comedy news for today. Don't forget, check out the Letterman podcast if you want to hear me talk about me for over an hour and uh, normal episodes here on this feed all weekend. Have a good day.